guys! Welcome to another episode of From the Practice Room. This is episode 7. And mm-hmm. today we're going to be doing a little uh, different type of podcast. We have a couple of questions that were submitted by some listeners, so we'll be answering some of your questions, uh, which I'm excited for because I don't know what the questions are. Paulina has the questions. Yes, I know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Paulina has questions. And um, anyways, before we get into that, Y'all, it is so hot here in California right now. I, like, legit had a heat stroke last night. It was just... Oh, my gosh. We don't have AC here in our house, so I've been dying. Are you alone? Dying. Oh. Um, yeah, so my mom and I, uh, we took our mattresses downstairs into our living room, and we had a little sleepover downstairs. It was, like, at least five That's degrees really cute. Cold, colder down there. But <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Yeah, we usually... We- <laughs> My dad usually never turns on the AC just because he's like, oh, we're just, we got to like power through it. But then it, it's gotten <laughs> to the point where he actually has turned it on. Yeah, it so is fortunate in that sense. way too hot right now. Um, but yeah, how how's everything going? You're almost done with your little boot camp, right? I finished it yesterday. But oh, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting I'm starting my actual semester on oh, Monday. Yes, <laughs> right into it. <sighs> How yeah. do you feel? I feel excited, but also just burnt out. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to sure. take tomorrow to just completely not think about any work at all because that's good. I need that break. Mm-hmm. That is but I'm good. excited. I think it'll be a good semester, even though it's online. But you got to make mm-hmm. the most of it. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. How are you feeling, Mindy? I'm, uh, I'm just really hot, honestly. <laughs> I know every text I get from you is like that emoji, the um, the red one, the with red the sweating sweat. emoji mm-hmm. with the tongue sticking. That's literally me. <laughs> it's hard to function. It really is. I know it actually is. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, we're gonna get right into it. Paulina, why don't you take it away with questions? <laughs> I'm okay, first, I just want to give a shout out to Alice and Masha because Aww. they submitted like Google Docs of questions. So thank you guys, our loyal <laughs> yes, supporters. Yes, that was very, yes, very nice. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna get into the questions, and right. we can kind of like, if you want to state your answer first, or I do, we can just see how that goes. Okay. So I'm kind of nervous. Question, oh we're gonna gosh. start. No, we're gonna start off easy. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Do yeah. you generally prefer major or minor pieces and then playing versus listening? Which one? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, it depends on my mood. I don't know. <laughs> like, although I think I would say my favorite key is G major. Okay. Okay. My favorite key I is remember G when, major. <laughs> when you were like, I want a favorite key. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think my favorite key is G major. After playing the Schubert G major sonata, I realized just that key, there's something about it. It's so warm and so full and like satisfying to me. Um mm. and I just anyways, you know the opening few chords of the G major sonata and also mm-hmm. like the same the same that's the same way that the Beethoven fourth concerto begins oh, yeah. just like mm-hmm. i don't know there's something about like a full g major chord that just like ah uh, it's like it melts your heart a bit um so i would say yeah g major is my favorite key but like to play or to listen to it really depends on my mood i guess mm-hmm. like i well, like that the, makes sense you know yeah i, I don't i don't have a direct answer but yeah I, 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 mean, can I can I can I guess know. yours? Can I can I sure. answer yeah, for you? Yeah, I mean you already know. You can answer for me. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all know Helena likes the dark stuff. So, <laughs> hands down, you you like to play minor keys. You like to listen to minor keys, specifically yep. C minor, right? Yes, my correct. Yep. Okay. Yep, you're very well, there. Good. You have it, y'all. <laughs> and that's the T. <laughs> that's the T. Yes, exactly, exactly. I, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Do you have, like, so. a favorite C minor piece? Favorite C minor piece? Hmm. <laughs> Putting me on the spot here. Oh, no, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. We're just bouncing questions back and forth. 
I don't know. I just, I mean, what comes to mind first is the partita. Mm hmm. You guys, this past week, Paulina <laughs> just ran through her entire Bach partita for me. The second, it's the second one, right? C minor. Yep, the second one. It was so beautiful. One day, I hope you all can hear it too. <laughs> oh, that's your nice. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, should we move on to the next question? Yes, I think I, okay. I don't have anything else to offer <laughs> for the next question. <laughs> No, I mean, we're starting off very simple. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Straightforward. Right. Straightforward and simple. Yes, yes, yes. Favorite piano to play on the brand? Oh, Steinway, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Steinway, yeah. for sure. Exactly. I mean, it's That's... like personal preference. Um, to me, mm -hmm. I like Steinway because, I mean, also it depends on each Steinway instrument because each instrument, yeah, it's true, like their own, has its own personality. Um, mm -hmm. I love, I'm just going to say it, I love my piano. <laughs> <laughs> my piano his name is benjamin he's a steinway b and um he just has a really nice uh rich warm tone especially his bass notes i i <laughs> sorry this is gonna get weird but i decided that he was male <laughs> because he had this really rich deep bass and i just like it just made me wow. feel a certain way so i was like <laughs> that's a male and your name is Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, I s no, yeah, same. I, I feel like I just exposed I myself, always, but it's fine. No, Transparency, no, no, you doll. did it. You did it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just be <being> real. <laughs> um, I too prefer Steinways. I've always preferred Steinways. Um, a lot of the time, I just feel like oh, other pianos they're too bright for me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just Steinway, I feel like resp I respond to it well, mm. and it responds to me. Yeah. I do. <laughs> and I also uh -huh. have a Steinway. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you can continue. Oh, no, no, I was going to change, go on to the next topic, but you okay. can finish what you were going to say. All right. Um, my, I love my Steinway as well. I think, I forgot what year he was from. I think 1926. <laughs> what year he's from? <laughs> Well, because he's a, a, you know, a he's a little player. older. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. Just a little older. Yeah. Oh. But it's really cool because he's an extended model A. He's mm. also a he. I just, I just think piano <laughs> is a he. <laughs> um, <laughs> extended model A. So it's like the size in between a model A and a model B. Oh. And they stopped making it, making them after a certain time because they realized that the extended model A's were taking away. From people buying the model b's oh interesting <laughs> yeah i didn't know that and so i have like one of the last i guess model a's mm -hmm. that were and i just i love to think about the fact that maybe my piano like belonged to some kind of musician before you know maybe, like someone who yeah. actually you never know yeah. but yeah i just love playing on my piano <laughs> oh yeah i i like playing on your piano too i whenever i go over to <laughs> paulina's house i play on her <laughs> piano and it's yeah. it's very different from mine. You know, each piano has its own like mm -hmm. personality, but like it's it's really nice. I really like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in your space, like your living room, that space it sounds really oh, yeah, good. Oh yeah, there's in that a space. lot of yeah. like space, yeah, for yeah. The, the windows. I mean, yeah. the ceiling is high. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? Um Oh, oh, I was going to say um it it can differ for like different pieces too. Like um, some pieces might require a brighter sound. Um, so in that case, like, you That's know, true. maybe like a Fazioli or a Yamaha might sound nice. It, and it depends. Like, honestly, every piano has its own personality. Every piano is different. But like, if I had to pick one, like generally, it would for sure be Steinway for me. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yes. All right. Next question. <laughs> okay. This has a few parts to it. Okay. So okay. I'll just start with the first part. Okay. Do you consider yourself a performer or an entertainer? Or I guess, like, do you think musicians should be performers or entertainers? That's, that's an interesting question. I know. Because, like, what, how do you define a performer and how do you define an entertainer? Yeah, I think, I definitely think there's a difference. Mm -hmm. um, there are some pianists that I would consider more entertainers than I see. before. I mean... Like, vi I guess entertainer... Actually, they're both, like, visual. <laughs> but, like, entertainer, like, 
uh, is kind of. I think mm-hmm. a performer doesn't have to be an entertainer, but an entertainer is a performer. Oh, like you don't have to perform yeah. to entertain, but you if you are entertaining, right, then you are right, performing. Right. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's such a. Hold on. It's like one of those weird things. <laughs> yeah, kind of like mess with my mind a bit. Um. <laughs> I can answer it this way. Like, I've never called myself an entertainer. Mm-hmm. Um, I've only, like, I've only called myself a performer. Yeah, me too. Um, I would not go into saying I'm an entertainer. <laughs> because yeah. of my, my intention to, when I play, is not necessarily to entertain. If it does entertain, that's great. Right. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Now that I think about it, um... Like, when you just said entertainer, I forgot their names, but they were, like, I think they were brothers, like, this really old, like, piano duo brothers who were, like, they would, like, do skits at the piano, but they're, like, really, oh. really good at piano. Like, uh-huh, they're uh-huh. amazing. Uh, but they do, like, like funny sketches and things like that yeah. where they, like, run around the piano, and but it's, like, yeah, amazing yeah. playing, but, like, mm-hmm. I just thought about that when you said entertainer. Like, no, that, that to me, me of- is, like entertaining yeah yeah exactly exactly that reminds me of victor borg is that victor his name yeah victor borg. borg remember the guy who um he also does the skits i showed you oh oh yes yes, so, like, yes yes the yes. page turning and yeah right, um, right, right, right. yeah that's an entertainer yes that's yeah i don't really uh yeah i don't see i although i do get you when you say like some pianists like that don't do that kind of skits yeah. like just like pianists um mm-hmm are to me kind of like entertainers i don't yeah. want to name drop anyone, Calling one out, yeah. but uh <laughs> yeah y'all know who we're I talking agree. about too <laughs> <laughs> i know i know okay let me move on to the next few parts of this question oh there's should performers more? yes there's okay. more should performers have to be extroverts no i think no no no, wait, no. no. you don't have to be yeah i'm not i don't because, consider myself yeah an i'm same yeah. Uh, I think like for some extroverts it might be like easier because they're they get energy from people. But you can mm-hmm. I think f- through performing and music you can get that kind of energy that an extrovert gets. But even being an introvert, yeah, that makes sense. yeah, that make sense? yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's true. That is true. Um, yeah, I yeah I definitely. But that's an interesting question because, like, when I was younger, I remember like hearing that, like, oh, if you want to be a performer, um, you have to have a big personality. You have to, yeah. you know, this and that. And like, I was always intimidated by that because I didn't feel Same. like I was that. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, but do I need to be that way? You know. And right, I guess yeah. slowly, you know, I realized, or just like in my experience seeing other people too, like, I don't think that's. Or even just in my own experience, like, I don't feel like my introvertedness is necessarily holding me back, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I agree, yeah. yeah. I I also felt intimidated, and I thought that's how it needs to be, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. That's a good question, though, because I, I think yeah, we have, there's, mm-hmm. there's definitely, like, some kind of stigma towards that, I think. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so, too. Uh, the next part to this is, should musicians be ready to perform at any point? Oh, this is something gosh. that just gets to me. Oh my gosh. Guys. It's like for pianists, especially when you enter a house that has a piano and people Ugh. ask you to play and it's like, oh my gosh, but I don't feel ready. Yeah. This is something that really gets me because I always feel guilty for yeah. like if I if me I too. Yeah, if I don't necessarily like wanna play at that moment, I'm always right. just like, Oh my gosh, like am I not a musician? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Same. I think Like, yes, if we're going to be like, oh, yeah, I am a musician, I'm a performer, right? Like, like, from any um, objective person's view, like, like, from any objective person's perspective, I think for sure they'd be like, oh, then, like, you know, like, can you play for us, right? Like, that's obvious, like, that's, they would obviously come to that conclusion or that assumption, you know, but... Like for me and you know, you two, um, like we talk about, like it's it's not that easy. Um mm-hmm. but I think that is something that I would like to work on because it's like same. It's like, yeah, like technically if I'm spending all all of my time like 
working on this and like perfecting my craft, then yeah, maybe I should be able to, you know, if there's a piano and someone wants to hear me play, like mm -hmm. maybe I should be able to. Um, but also I think, you know, and that that's why it's sometimes good to have like, like one or two pieces where, you know, you always have like in your back pocket and something you really yeah. enjoy playing and like a short piece. Um, yeah, but yeah, even then yeah. it's kind of hard and intimidating, but I think, yeah, ideally, <laughs> I know, a I do. Should I think a lot of ready, it, but, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with, for me, trying to just change my mindset about not being a perfectionist and literally just being yeah. like, I'm just here to share music. Like they want to hear, right. usually when people ask you, like they're not going to, they don't want to judge you. They just want to hear anything. Like they just want to yeah, hear their true. piano being the tick tickling of the ivory of the piano. That's what you're <laughs> yeah, hear. that's true. I think it's. So. I think we. I mean, we've kind of covered this before. Kind of talked about this, but it's definitely. I'm sure it's harder for us classical musicians just because you know we're expected of that kind of perfection, or at least we think we're expected of that kind of perfection. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, some that's something I definitely want to work on. But. Same. Yeah. Definitely. Next question. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important to listen to classical music? Oh, well, <laughs> what a wholesome question. Um, <laughs> well, you know how there are like all these studies about how like, mm -hmm. uh, like if babies listen to Mozart, they're going to be like more yes. intelligent or blah, blah, blah. I, I honestly don't know, like, if that is, I mean, I'm sure it's true because <laughs> I, I don't know the scientific reasoning behind it. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to say that because there's like some kind of scientific study on that. But for me, I think that everyone should just listen to classical music or at least give it a shot, like a genuine shot, because it's good. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's just it's good, you know, like and there's so much variety um, within classical music, because I, th I honestly think a lot of people, when they think classical music, think more of, like, Bach, Mozart, Haydn, mm -hmm. like, that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. but, like, within classical music, there's, like, a huge variety of different styles, um, and I genuinely think that everyone can find, um, something that they like um mm -hmm. and can relate to and um anyways it's just i think classical music has so much potential to um appeal to every single person in so many different ways um and yeah i hope that everyone uh i don't know i can i can really get into this because <laughs> cuz i feel like Sometimes when people think of classical music, they already have like a certain um, mindset misconception. or misconception. Yeah, misconception about it and don't even really want to give it a shot or give it a chance. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would just say be open minded. You know, if you try it and you really don't like it, fine. You know, like everyone has their own taste and um, it's OK if you don't necessarily like it. But I would just say at least give it a try. You know, Let's give it a try. yeah, yeah. I would say I just think when it comes to anything like classical, that whether that be classical music, classical art, classical dance, yeah, to me it just feels the most closest to our human selves, mm -hmm. and especially in a society where we're kind of uh, moving away from that with all the technology and everything, it's yeah. even more important to return back to humanity. That's true, and I just I think if more people were to listen and like appreciate classical music i just think we would be better people oh i um, love that <laughs> that's true there's something yeah. that draws you back to like your own humanity i feel like with classical music mm -hmm. uh yeah classical music is very human very very human and mm -hmm. and yeah. it just encompasses the full range of human emotions right from the good to the bad yeah I, I like that question. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. wholesome question. Yeah. All right. Next question. Does the size of an audience scare you? This has another part to it. Um. Oh, okay. I will say. Uh. Okay. Again, it depends. Um. You can bring me like 
the smallest audience, but if it's like my professor, some other <laughs> professors, some like, you know, like yes, even some of my colleagues, like I'd freak out, you know? Mm-hmm. But like if you bring me like two hundred random people that I don't know, like honestly I'd be okay. Five hundred people I don't know, like I'll be okay. I might in the back of my mind be like, Oh my goodness, it's like five hundred <laughs> people, but like you know, it it depends like who's yeah. in the crowd, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. That's the same thing for me. I also what's interesting is I I think I find it scarier to play in more uh cl- closer intimate settings where I can yes. see people. Yes, yes. <laughs> like yes. if it's at home and then I have like people sitting around or like standing uh-huh. around like the piano, mm-hmm. like that scares me way more than if it was on stage because I I I kind of I don't know I like that like. I don't know that in a way barrier <laughs> um, like it's like your space yeah and I yeah, just feel like it's I easier for too. me to get into the music and not kind of think about what other people are thinking <laughs> yeah true so I totally agree so at UCLA like we have this um space that a lot of people like to perform in it's called the Austin Ensemble mm-hmm. Room and it's basically just this this it's like one room with it there's no stage or anything um so everyone's on the same level and like the chairs like you they're not like built in so like you can rearrange the chairs however mm-hmm. you want and a lot of people like performing in that space um i know like strings like to perform in that space like brass because there's really nice acoustics i honestly don't think it's the best for piano anyways but <laughs> either way like i whenever I have to perform there, like, I get more anxious because it's, like, you can literally, you can see the people, like, from the yeah. corner of your eye. And the right thing is when you. you're also playing and you you look straight at the, um, what's it called? The the cover of the piano and you can see the reflection oh, of yeah, people. That's, that's true. That's what gets me. Like, yeah. I don't want to see, oh my gosh, like, yeah. just, I don't know, I feel like it's so distracting to me. Yeah, same. I, I also, yeah, I... I prefer if I have like a stage and I can't see um, the audience. Yeah, yeah. It does. It does help to like get into the mood. Although mm-hmm. now that I think about it, I don't. It really depends. Like I do. I know because like, you're very also like you like to talk to people to like yeah. kind of break down the fourth wall. Yeah. Because sometimes it does make me feel better. Um, No, here's what it is. I know what it is. So it's not that it necessarily has to be dark and I can't see you, but it's like I would feel more comfortable if there was like I had my own space. There was like distance, Mm -hmm. a little more distance. Like because in Austin, right, like literally they could be like five feet away from you and I just like (laughs) they can see your sweat coming down your face. Like it's just like it's a little too intimate for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I. I think I only played in Austin like once or twice. I've tried to avoid it mm-hmm. at all costs. <laughs> yeah, or or even like the recording studio. We we had the to recording there studio. A lot. It's true, 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 true. We that had our piano marathons in there. Yeah, I did the not have a very good there. experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. A lot of us didn't. I know it's just something about like that kind of space, you know. Yeah. But but for sure the acoustics in there for piano is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. For the next question, it's a kind of funny question. Well, it's not funny. It's worded funny. <laughs> um, okay. Are prodigies real? Are they huh? real, Mindy? <laughs> what do you? What do you? Uh, yes, they're very yes. real. They're very real. Um, yeah. But I have a lot to say also about this. Okay. Because yes, well, they're yes, they're real. But I think there's a huge problem with prodigies because. Mm-hmm. They get all their fame at such a young age, and then a lot of the time when they grow up, they aren't, they're not, how do I say this? Like, they, at one point, they stop growing, I feel like, um, because they reach their limit at a very, like, mm-hmm. young age, and then it's mm-hmm. just like, after that, they kind of, they'll either lose motivation, mm-hmm. or quit, or, or, or sink from the pressure, because it's hard to keep up that kind of um thing yeah. like once you've already achieved at such an age mm-hmm. so i just yeah. personally think that prodigies are a problem <laughs> okay, not a pr- like i just also because they I make don't us think look it's a bad. good idea <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah but that's true no but it's I just fine don't think it's a good it's a good i don't know i don't think it's a healthy way 
Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think you hit it. Like, not to say, not to, like, bag on all prodigies, like, it's it's great at, that you can play so no, well of course, at there are age. some that yeah. are able to also, like, continue um, yeah, and do achieving very well. highly in, yeah, in, yeah. in their older group. But I think right, it's it's something about something about it isn't necessarily healthy, um, though mm. you know yeah it varies from person to person, um, but yeah for some reason like me too I feel like I see a lot of prodigies that do very well in their younger years and then somehow afterwards you know there's it either mm-hmm. they either plateau or kind of just like there's like a downfall and yeah I, I don't know. Um, but to answer the question plainly, yes, they're real. <laughs> they are real. <laughs> they are real. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we can move on then. Next question. Um, do you believe that all musicians should have a classical music foundation? For example, rappers, pop singers, etc. That's interesting. I think, I think, um, for sure, like there's definitely no harm. Mm-hmm. I personally can't speak for those people because. I I I don't know don't how know it would there. benefit for them, but <laughs> I would think that um, I think it it could benefit just the way that you listen to music, even. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like I'm just gonna say, like like Jacob Collier. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew you were gonna say. I was gonna. If you weren't gonna say, I was gonna like tell you to talk about him. <laughs> Because, yeah, I've recently just been really inspired by him. Um, and he, uh, by the way, you guys, he just dropped his the third volume of Jesse, uh, which is this it's four really part cool. album. Yeah, that uh, he's coming out with, and he just dropped the third volume, and it's it's amazing. Just like his music, I think the thing about his music is he, you can tell he's just he loves all music, just like any kind of music um Mm -hmm. and you can tell in his music he's kind of just like breaking down um the barriers between genres of music like within his album like you'll hear like rap r&b like even some classical elements like folk Mm -hmm. jazz like everything and he combines it together and it's just like it's like an amazing experience to listen to the album like a sound world yeah (laughs) it's amazing and for him he well because his parents were both violinists classical violinists i think his mom teaches at rcm uh she's a violin professor and um so he grew up listening to bach uh stravinsky shostakovich um composers like that and um you can tell in his music just the way like just the way that he treats harmony or even structure Mm -hmm. in his songs um and okay, maybe I'm just biased because I'm a classical musician and I can pick out those things in the mu- in his music. But to me, it's just like it's so fresh. Like we don't really hear that um, yeah, a lot. I and <laughs> um, and like me listening to his music, I feel like I'm just being like I'd never thought of classical like a classical style to be mixed with like I don't know like R and B and like um, rap and things like that. And mm-hmm. anyways. I don't know if that answers the question, but for sure, I think it could benefit anyone to mm-hmm. have a classical background in in their own ways. I wouldn't know how, but I can only imagine yeah. that it would benefit them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I I think there there were also like quite a few um, jazz pianists who came out from a classical music background, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and I think that helps them a lot. I just yeah, I think classical music is a very great foundational yeah um part of music and just yeah the understanding of the harmony um Mm -hmm. i don't know it just it just makes sense to me that like i don't know it's great to have that foundation for any style yeah because i think like classical music like i feel like music kind of grew out of or or, like music transformed from that kind of you know, mm-hmm. music. So, or, or the music we have today kind of transformed in some way from that kind of music. So, um, I'm also a believer that um, everyone should have some kind of piano background for sure. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. if you learn piano first, um, you'd have an easier time learning whatever other instrument. Yeah. Um, 
just in in like just even like just re- how to read music um yeah. if you can read piano music i think it'd be easier to read any other music um mm-hmm. and anyways i think playing piano uh, r- real it's and it's not even because i'm biased and because i'm a pianist mm-hmm. but i i really do think that uh it's it's a really good foundation for anyone who's learning any kind of music so yeah 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 exactly mm-hmm. all right next question how do you cope with getting jealous? Oh, <laughs> whoa! We're whoa. getting deep. Um, <laughs> I will say I think I used to struggle with it a lot. Like I mm-hmm. used to, uh, and I think also because like I grew up in that like competition environment. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. doing competitions around my area, and it's like you know everyone that does the same competitions as you when whenever you get there and you look at the list and you're like oh they're here they're here they're here and it's like you already know what you're up against and Mm -hmm. you kind of at least for me I just feel like you build this kind of like I I don't know it's just like you know a little bit about how everyone plays and like what you need uh in order to like be better than them and things like that I don't know like yes it's it's not healthy, and we, we mm-hmm. talked about doing a podcast just about competitions and things like yeah. that. I don't know when we'll do that, but we we could go on about that. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I think because I grew up in that kind of environment, even in the first couple of years of college, for me, I had that kind of mindset, and it really messed with my mind mentally um, for my first year mainly. I think after that, um, my teacher helped me a lot with that. Um, and just realizing that like, you, you have to go at your own pace, you know, like if you, like, I love this example where like, um, we're all running a race, right. And, Mm -hmm. uh, we all have, we're all built differently. We all have different size, shape, legs and things like that. Some people like you have longer legs than me. I have shorter (laughs) legs. And it's just like, you all we all are built differently and so the way we run is differently and like you have longer legs you have longer strides than me but if I actively try to keep up with you all the time like I'm gonna trip and fall because I'm just not built that way you know and Mm. um so we have to go at our own pace um and that's fine and it's okay if you know someone is a little further along than you 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 know we all have our differences we all have our um, strengths and weaknesses and that's fine you know um Mm -hmm. and I think yeah it took me a long time to realize that and to come to come to accept that I just need to focus on my own music um and my own growth um and always try to be the best that I can do and not uh strive to be oh better than this person better than that person because what's the point you know like music Mm -hmm. is it's not supposed to be a competition it's just it's your own art and you want to say what you want to say and um what you want to say is special and unique and you shouldn't try to compete with someone else yeah so yeah, yeah. i was going to i was going to talk about like the indiv- individuality aspect of it which helps me most because mm-hmm. it's like how can you compare or compete yourself or compete with someone else when you are kind of just on your own thing like you're doing right. your own thing and <clears throat> it's different than what even if you're like both pianists or whatever like it's still different like what, how mm. you do it what you approach how you approach it it's different we don't need everyone to be the same yeah no point of that. otherwise it'd be boring like mm-hmm. yeah you yeah, oh, just, actually sorry i'm just gonna yeah. interject a little um <laughs> uh jacob Hollier's mom <laughs> this is <laughs> random but you know how i said she she's a um violin teacher and i saw this one really short clip i don't even know where it's from but i just randomly came across it it's like this really short 17 second clip um where she talks about like we are artists and we all shouldn't try to sound like someone else try to mm-hmm. sound like you you know like yeah. that's that's what our job as musicians are it's fine to um be fans of someone or their mm-hmm. sound or whatever and try to maybe imitate in a way at when you're yeah. learning but ultimately like we're all trying to find our own personal sound mm-hmm. you know yeah like yeah. i um i know a lot of musicians or i mean just a lot of people who do things that are great they tend to say that because individuality <laughs> is what got them to where they are like them just mm-hmm. kind of figuring out what their little like niche is and what like yeah. what is their like 
thing you know mm-hmm. it's like what is your thing um yeah. like i think like like billy eilish actually is someone who talks about it a oh, lot like yeah. she's just like like why does everyone want to like dress like me or like why does everyone like i already exist you do mm. you you be you yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i like that yeah just you do you you be you yeah it's like yeah mm-hmm so yeah, I just think that's just the that's what I try to come to whenever mm-hmm. if I have any feelings of that. Yeah. I like that yeah. was a, these are really good questions. I, I really I like these questions. Yeah. I really come too. What instrument do you identify with spiritually? Like your spirit instrument. Is it the piano? Why or why not? <laughs> um I feel like I know okay. well Yeah. I might know what you you're okay, gonna say. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna say. So, because <laughs> I'm a pianist and piano is my main instrument, I think just by default, I automatically um, just associate my self. Or what was what did you say? Spiritual uh, spirit instrument. Oh, my spirit. All right, all right. I yeah. Ident- identify with spirit. Yeah, I think I just automatically by default identify with the piano, and I mean, just like I could talk about why I love the piano. I think. It's so awesome that we literally have, like, the whole orchestra within our fingertips. And, um, you know, I can be um, the flutes and I can be uh, can the be bass. The like, you know, I can be, like, yeah, everything yeah. all at once. And exactly. it's cool. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, um, I I just love the sound of <laughs> I know you know cello, what I'm gonna say the cello <laughs> yes okay I just love the sound of the cello and which is why I collaborate a lot with cellists I just I love the rep first of all but the instrument itself like I do a hundred percent agree when people say that ch- this um the tone and the sound of the cello um is closest to the human voice I completely agree and mm-hmm. yeah there's just something about that rich tone. I really like a deep, rich tone. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyways, I, I don't know if like I can say that that's my spirit to instrument because I don't play the cello, but like right. I love it. Like I just if I could play another instrument mm-hmm. um, as well as I play the piano, I think. It would be the cello. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say, sorry, this is super random, but uh, interestingly enough, I feel like a lot of cellists that I talk to, um, they say that they want to play the piano. Really? Yeah. And mm-hmm. I actually, I can understand that because, you know, like for them, another great thing is like for the cello, for any other instrument, like, uh, how do I say this? Like, they have a very specific kind of emotional appeal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the piano just has a wider range just because, yeah. you know, just because of the nature of the instrument. Um, but anyways, I just feel very personally connected to uh, the cello. Um, but, like, yeah, I've talked to a lot of cellists who feel like, oh, like, I wish I could play piano, just, like, that kind of, like, full sound um, and being able to play, like, all the solo music without relying on anyone else. And, like, yeah. 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 Anyways, that's my answer. <laughs> oh, it's very interesting. Yeah. I, I love the cello as well, um, mm-hmm. but I do have to say, definitely, I, I, I just think piano is my spirit. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit animal. Spirit. My instrument. spirit animal is a corgi. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> corgi. Um. Uh. I just. I mean, when I was younger, like nobody put me into. I. I. I wasn't really like put into piano. I kind of just gravitated mm-hmm. towards it, and I wanted to play it. So. I just think that that uh, is what my spirit enough. wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What would you ask your future self, 40 years old, about the future? Uh, like related to music self. or not related to music? Is this just a life question? I don't question? know. Up to you, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. What would I... Wait, say that again. Well, I could, what would you ask your 40-year-old self about the future? 
Like, what would you, if you were to meet Wait. your forty year old self? What would you want to know oh. like, about the future? Oh, okay. Oh, I think for me, I want to know what is the state of classical music and yeah. um, whether technology is at any like, or if there is any um, what's the word? Like, if technology is going to getting close to kind of taking even though I don't think it can or should ever take over, Mm -hmm. like, is that something that seems to be something in the future? Like, is AI going to, Yeah. I don't know, um, threaten classical music? Yeah. Whoa. I don't... Like, when you just asked me that, like, I, I was just, in my mind, I was just like, uh, like... Am I married yet? Um, <laughs> do I have a family yet? Like, do I have a corgi and a Tesla yet? <laughs> like, That's honestly, so if we're talking about music, though, um, like personally, I would want for myself, like, am I, am I working in my dream job yet? Which is something yeah. related to chamber music, um. Uh, hopefully have more people been exposed to classical music. Hopefully classical music has not died yet, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Um, and it's still very much alive. And um, I think it always will live. It has to. Like, I just, it has to, you know, like, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I really hope so. Yeah. 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 Um, do we have a- Time for another. I have another scenario that I hope to lead into the um, tune of inspiration. Okay, but let's do that. Should I just move on to that? Sure. Okay. So we have a scenario question. Okay. Um, it has basically I kind of combined to. I have like a follow up question for it after that kind of relates. Okay. But okay. So you are trapped in a gnome home, and you notice the gnome has a beautiful piano in the living room. The gnome tells you the only way that they will let you go is if you play a piece that will make them tear up. What piece will you be playing? Oh my. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I already have an answer. Well, you go. Okay. Chopin Nocturne Opus 48 number 1. And C minor, that is one of my favorites. Oh, that, that, I totally whoa, oh that was goodness. so weird cuz Oh, okay, yeah. That is one of my favorite C minor pieces, but I think that piece is very tear. tear yeah, <laughs> that is a good one. Oh my goodness! I guess it can't be too long then, because because you're trying to get out yeah. of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like straight to the point, making you cry. Straight to the point, huh? <sighs> There's so many. I don't know. I feel like. Like, for me, like, I'll have, like, phases where, like, this piece really makes me want to cry. <laughs> and then I, and then, like, a couple months later, I have, like, this piece that really wants, yeah. like, really makes me want to cry. I'm like, okay, fine. Whatever. If we're going to lead into the tune of inspiration, I'm going to use my tune of inspiration for this. Okay, okay. Um, is, is, are we done with questions, though? No, I have a follow-up question. So do you want to reveal that after, then? Okay, fine. Yeah, let's, let's do the follow-up first. <laughs> okay. So this question is, um, so if it, like, for that piece that you are talking about, if you could play for one person in the world, living or alive, wait, living, that's something, living or Living or dead. alive. <laughs> I love that, dead or alive. No, okay, okay, dead or alive. Who would you play for? Definitely not the composer who wrote it because <laughs> that piece is so hard, but it's so beautiful. I'll share it with you guys in a bit. Um, you have a suspense. Let movie. me think. Stay tuned, dude. That's hard. Do you want me to answer first? Yeah, you go first. I need to think okay. about this. I this will get a little bit sad, but um, so like a year ago, my grandma passed away, who really um loved Chopin, and so Aww. I would I didn't get to play for her. Like we sent her recordings and stuff. But her hearing is mm. already getting kind of bad at that point. But oh. I really, really wish I could play for her. Oh. Chopin. The Chopin piece. I love that. 
And she yeah. she played some piano too, right? Like she Yeah, she loved to just kinda like play around. She it was very Aww. musical. She loved to dance. She yeah. I remember uh when I think when you guys had gone back to Russia mm-hmm. a little after her passing a couple of years ago. I remember you sent me like a video of you playing on her piano, right? Yeah. Was that yeah. her piano? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then there was that little fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That that was the first piano I touched ever when I was wow like, a year. Not even that's a year so old, special. Oh, yeah. you know what? Actually, I think I would say the same because Aww. um, my grandma too uh had passed away two years ago, and she taught me how to play the piano. She was the first. She was my first piano yeah. teacher. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, and, uh, anyways, she, I remember, like, uh, cause she'd play a lot. She'd spend her, like, their summers, every summer, uh, my grandma and my grandpa, they would come from Taiwan and they would stay with us. Um, and she, she loved the arts. She was a very good, uh, painter and she loved to draw and she taught oh. me how to draw and paint and, um, I, I really feel like a lot of my artistic side actually came from her. Um, and yeah, I feel the same about my grandma. <laughs> yeah, that's so special. Both me and Masha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, she would play the piano too. And I remember that was like initially, um, like the first time I ever heard piano being played was like by her. And mm-hmm. um, anyway, so she would take like – she would make herself like she'd just like take a piece of paper and like write like numbers on it. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five. And then each number would be its own little like square, just like a tiny square. Mm-hmm. And then she would tape it on to the keys. And then um it would be a song. So if I followed the numbers, it would be like a song. So like twinkle twinkle little star, mm-hmm. like things like that. Um and so yeah, that's like the that's first. So um, yeah, she was like basically my first teacher, and um, she loved to hear me play. But um, towards the end of her life, she was as she got more sick, she couldn't um, come fly over to the U.S. as much, so she didn't get to hear me play as much. But yeah, I think I would say the same. I think I would play for her because I think mm-hmm. a lot of where I am today it stems from that, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah. I think she would she would really love it and appreciate it. Aww. Yeah. Yay. That's a very touching question. Yeah. That's a good question. I think I'm touching way. All so. good questions. Thank you all yeah, for submitting like to, these. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to lead into the tune of inspiration? Now we get to find right. out what Mindy's piece is. All that you'll be right, playing. you guys. So, if I was trapped in a little gnome house... <laughs> Oh, there was a tiny little... Okay, but first of all, then this piano must be tiny. <laughs> right? Okay, whatever. Loophole. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, and I needed to get out, and I needed to make this gnome cry. I would play Scrabbins Etude Opus 42, number 5. Okay, I'm just going to play... I yes. I was going to play the clip for you first, um, and then talk a little bit about it. That part gives me goosebumps. Right. Is this kissing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so you guys, this is um, Kissin's performance of the Scriven Opus 42, number five, I think, uh, at the Verbier Festival. 
um, and it's on YouTube, um, I will say first that that specific recording performance is one of my top favorite um, recordings just in general uh, mm-hmm. on YouTube. Like, it's just, I I just love the way he plays this piece and specifically that time. Um, he actually mm-hmm. has a couple more uh, different recordings of the same etude, but that specific performance is wow. just amazing. And um, I don't even remember when the first, when was the first time I heard this piece? Uh, but I remember like my freshman year specifically was when I started to really uh, have a desire to play this piece. Um, and I told myself that I wanted to do it uh, sometime before I graduated from UCLA. Mm. And you guys actually like, okay, so uh, I didn't get to play it in undergrad, but I had planned on playing it for my final master's recital and I did have it prepared I was you like did, yeah. learning it and um my final recital I played oh so long ago what did I play okay I played um uh Schubert, Schubert. C minor yes Schubert C minor sonata and Polonaise fantasy Chopin Polonaise fantasy and I was gonna end with that this A2. Yeah. Um, but because of my hand issue, my hands kind of gave out at the end. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to call it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I didn't actually get to play it. But um, it is I just. I really wish I could hear you play it again. Because I heard you play it in the run through. And I yeah. loved it. I'm and for I... sure. Like, I'm going to. When I do start playing piano again. I haven't played in a while. Because I'm still recovering. But I. I definitely want to continue uh, working on it because I didn't have a lot of time to work on it, so it's kind of messy, honestly. <laughs> but um, I definitely, I think that's going to be one of the pieces that I really want to just like keep, um, mm. uh, just in, the, in my back pocket, just to like. Yeah, that's a good one. It's it's just I don't even I don't know. There's just something about that etude. It's just like a mixture of like kind of like unease, but also like hope Mm -hmm. you know and also um like bittersweetness in a sense right yeah like i I don't know know, you like the bittersweetness i do i love that's why i like schubert i feel like schubert's music so much of it is like just like bittersweetness you know Mm -hmm. um and yeah i think that says a lot about who i am as a person (laughs) no there's uh, a beauty in that (laughs) like it it's really it's really beautiful like yeah. Sweet, you know like you can't have one without the other too. yeah yeah exactly it's like all things with all things will come to an end but yeah. there's that bittersweetness um and just like a feeling of hope too um yeah. and i think that's why i really love this piece um one day one day you guys i'm gonna perform it one day i really want to perform it one day <laughs> yes. and Aww. share it with people i don't think it's I don't think it's performed that often. But. Yeah, I don't think I've really seen it or heard it. Yeah. In any recital program. Yeah. But, but anyways. Yeah, so that this was such a fun podcast. I, I know, really liked I know. doing I love this. That. Like, yeah. questions. Yeah, well, this is kind of perfect uh, because actually this is the last episode of our first season, first you guys. Season. Yeah. We're going to be uh, taking a hiatus for now because both of us will be starting school soon and yeah. Paulina starting very soon in like a day. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, as things get busier, um, we just thought it would be a good time to, you know, take a pause. But Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be back. We well, will yeah, be we'll be back. Um, and hope to bring you a lot more fun, interesting content. But um, for now, yeah, this is uh, this episode seven, last episode of season one, and um, seven's like a good number. It's good. I seven yeah. is isn't doesn't it represent completion? Or, Does it? I don't know. Like I, think. Well, I don't know. Like, like cause like a week great. is like seven. Days. I don't know. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I, anyways, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> this was like such yeah. a fun little quarantine summer project. It though. was, it was, I'm and really if it glad, hadn't yeah. been for quarantine, I don't think we would have found the time to do yeah, it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And 
just wanted to say thank you to all of our listeners and for joining us um, on this journey. It was we so fun. You. Yeah. And um, yeah, th- thanks for, you know, giving us feedback and responding to the things we talked about. Mm-hmm. We just... It really means a lot like to yeah. us like both of us every time like when we when we receive like some feedback you know we're just like oh like we're just so touched yeah so. yeah because we just we you know we didn't we didn't jump into this being like oh yeah l- like let's become podcasters and well, gain but, as yeah. many followers and well i think our our intentions were just like we we are passionate about what we do and have mm-hmm. a lot of opinions and we just wanted a place to put it and you know whoever yeah. wanted to listen can listen um yeah. and so we're just happy that you know we have people that listened and enjoyed it and could relate and had you mm-hmm. know positive thoughts about it so so thank you for for joining us on this journey um mm-hmm. and yeah we'll we'll see you all soon um mm-hmm. And yeah, any any last words <laughs> to cap it off? Oh, I think this has to be good. <laughs> <laughs> we just hope that you are all staying safe, healthy, and well in these times, yes. and continuing to, if you're a musician, continue continuing to make your music. If you're a listener, continuing to listen to music and supporting mm-hmm. fellow artists. Um, this is a very pivotal time like for sure like we're living in we're living through a global pandemic with so much other stuff going on and Mm -hmm. it's a crazy crazy world and like right now music is something that everybody needs and i just hope that we all continue to share it to love it you know to have it continue in and past and survive this pandemic yeah wow yeah, that was so good. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's <laughs> so speech. important. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, it's just as musicians during this time, it's so important to find um, ways to, you know, to adapt. And I think it's a great time for all, us all to, you know, just be creative and continue to find ways to inspire yourself um and to yeah let's better people yeah exactly. yeah exactly let's let's you know become continue to work on you know becoming better people becoming better artists and musicians and um yeah we're all <laughs> oh my goodness i'm about to say, <laughs> You're gonna say you gotta say you I'm gotta about to say, say it. this again <laughs> you guys we're all in this together okay <laughs> <laughs> like no really i think I just I just feel like another reason why we created this podcast is because we wanted it to feel like a community, you know, like mm-hmm. like we've talked about so many times classical music often feels like this like big we have this like competitive kind of nature and like we kind of wanted to break that down because yeah. it's not about that and it is about, you know, growing together and learning together and helping each other. Um and exactly. yeah, so so Again, thank you guys for allowing us to have this kind of space where we do that. Um, and I just hope that we all continue to do that um, yeah. together. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And on that note, happy practicing. Oh, yeah, you guys. For happy our practicing. Out there. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. And yeah. until next time. Until next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.